Okay, so we in the Bronx again. This story takes place in 2008, some of us may remember. Not sure how this turned out, but let's get right into this. The sugar cookies were fresh out of the oven when the cops banged on the door. In just moments, 15-year-old Sherelle Butler went from enjoying a lazy Saturday at a friend's house to being known as Lady Red, one of the city's youngest accused double murderers. Her slight frame, sweet manner and designer clothes made Butler an unlikely suspect for two brutal slings within days. But cops had said she's a ruthless killer who rooted through the pockets of one victim as he lay dying and needed eight stitches to close a cut she suffered hacking to death another. Lady Red was very involved in both murders, said a law enforcement source. Looking like that, no one would believe that she could do this. Robert Pastor, 19, who says he was baking cookies with Butler that day and is charged in one of the killings, told the Daily News that Butler is a sweet, stylish teen with no gang ties, and her only crime was running with the wrong crowd. She is innocent, he said in a jailhouse interview. She has nothing to do with this. She's just a little girl. Butler, a trim teen with a head of soft, light brown curls, lived in a peach-colored home, complete with a white fence, along Poplar Avenue in the Bronx, with her father and stepmother. She was enrolled in Lehman High School, but sources said she was frequently absent. Several neighbors said Butler didn't so much as curse and never sported anything red that would signify ties to the Blood Street Gang, as cops have alleged. When I see her, I see complete innocence, said a neighbor, who lived a few doors down and talked to Butler while he worked at a nearby pharmacy. Never think of it in a million years, said another person, she appeared to be a nice young lady. Before early 2008, Butler's parents, who declined to be interviewed for this story, thought their daughter's biggest problem was breaking curfew, cops said. Then, in March, a few days shy of her 15th birthday, Butler was arrested for slugging a security guard who was arresting one of her friends. She was charged with gang assault, sources said. On August 25, Butler and three other teens sliced a 17-year-old girl's face and arms with a broken bottle on Livier Street, sources said. That victim's mother, who asked not to be identified, said her daughter used to be friends with Butler, but feared she was growing more troubled, leading to the violent showdown. My daughter no longer wanted to hang out with her, the mother said. She sensed something was wrong about her, and she knew she had to stay away. Then, by late September, while hanging out in Westchester Square, Butler caught the eye of Pastor, who cops said was a high-ranking blood in the Throg's Neck neighborhood. Pastor, who also went by the name Magic, had a rap sheet dating back to when he was just 13. According to Pastor, Butler was more sophisticated and stood out from the crowd, dressing like a Manhattan girl in Uggs and stylish clothing from American Eagle. She is not like other girls, said Pastor, a chubby teen who claimed he was not a blood, but in fact was studying law at Berkeley College in Manhattan. Citing privacy reasons, the college would not comment on whether Pastor was a student there. Pastor wouldn't say if their relationship was romantic, but he was charged with statutory rape for having sex with Butler and beamed when talking about her. Sources also said Butler had Pastor's nickname, Magic, tattooed on her neck. Pastor said he never heard anyone call Butler Lady Red. He called her Rel, short for Sherelle or he called her Lil Scrap, street slang for Buddy, derived from the Scooby-Doo cartoon character Scrappy-Doo. The pair were homebodies, he said, picking up five movies at a time from Blockbuster, like the Will Smith hit, I Am Legend. They also loved making Pillsbury sugar cookies, cutting the dough and placing the slices on a baking sheet. Butler taught him to take the cookies out while they were doughy, so they'd stay soft. That's just what they were doing on December 27, when cops showed up at Pastor's parents' Bronx home and charged her in two gruesome murders. Police said the killings began six days before Christmas. On December 19, Butler, along with Carlos Colon, aka Banger, 20 at the time, stormed into apartment on the 2000 block of Dewey Avenue. Two others accompanied Banger and Butler. Inside the apartment, the crew stole pot and cash and shot 24-year-old Christopher Umpierre dead on a sofa, cops said. Butler knew the people living there and got the group inside. She was the voice that told the other people what to do, a police source said. While Umpierre was dying, she was the one who went through his pockets. Christopher Umpierre used to play basketball on Saturdays on the court at St. Raymond Academy for Girls on East Tremont Avenue, about a block from Butler's home. But neighbors of Christopher Umpierre at Swinton Avenue in the Bronx said they did not remember ever seeing Ms. Butler in the building. 22-year-old John Hawkins Drago was adopted from Russia during his pre-teen years. 
he came over along with his sister, joining their younger brother, who had already been adopted by the same couple a few years earlier. Relatives said that Hawkins Drago was having trouble adapting to the American culture, so he came to the Bronx to live with his uncle and finish high school. When his uncle passed away, he ended up on the streets. According to Hawkins Drago's family, he became a drug addict and a thief. The family couldn't prove it, but they believed their adopted son was involved in a recent burglary that targeted their house. Two days after the murder of Christopher Umpierre, 22-year-old John Drago was murdered. Allegedly he was stabbed by Butler, Pastor and two others as many as 50 times, according to cops. Drago, just 5 feet 3 and 125 pounds, was horribly chopped up. The pair stuffed his body in garbage bags and placed it in a shopping cart. They rolled the cart into a trash-filled alley. When Butler sliced her hand during the hacking and bled all over the apartment, she went from gangster girl to, wow, this is serious, a cop said. Police believed it was a revenge killing because Drago spoke to cops about a robbery Pastor had committed a year prior. Then, Drago went on to sleep with one of Pastor's ex-girlfriends, even taking her on a trip to the Bahamas while Pastor was in prison, a source said. Pastor, charged with second-degree murder and first-degree manslaughter, gave a string of alternate explanations for the crimes and defenses for himself and Butler, but police described him as manipulative and controlling. He believed cops came down hard on Butler in hopes she'd dime him out for other crimes. Butler was indicted for murder and manslaughter and held without bail at a secure juvenile facility. She faced 10 years to life in prison on each count. Still, Pastor was hopeful, asking a reporter to pass along the same words he spoke to Butler when she was indicted on December 31st. We will be home soon. The case against her began to take shape on with the arrest of a guy named James Medina. Investigators said that Mr. Medina, 23, tampered with the scene of Mr. Hawkins Drago's killing, which they said had been Mr. Medina's apartment at Pelham Parkway South, in an effort to help Butler cover her tracks. The police arrested him on a charge of hindering prosecution and an unrelated charge of marijuana possession. An anonymous telephone tip led investigators to Mr. Medina, the police said. Two days after his arrest, they charged Butler with Mr. Hawkins Drago's death and the death of Christopher Umpierre. Not sure exactly what's going on with these people in this present day. But this about wraps it up for this one, and as always stay low and thanks for watching.